Here we have a decoupled hydraulic circuit. This example will serve to illustrate the difference between a signal bond and a power bond. We can think of this as two subsystems, this being one and this the other. If you notice, the fluid that flows out of the first subsystem flows into the second subsystem, but the spout at the outlet of the first subsystem is not submerged into the second subsystem. Hence the second subsystem, its pressure here does not influence the flow out of the first subsystem, but the flow out of the first subsystem does influence the second subsystem. So there is only an influence of the first system on the second, but not the second on the first. We can come up with bond graphs for each of these subsystems and connect them through a signal bond. We first identify our distinct pressures in each system. There's a distinct pressure at the bottom of each of these accumulators. There's also atmospheric pressure at the outlet of each of these subsystems. So if we establish for each of these two zero junctions, And we identify or recognize that at each of these zero junctions, well, at the first, we have a flow source. And that flow is Q. We also have an accumulator with a capacitance of C1. At the second, we have atmospheric pressure that is an effort source. Now, at the third, we have another flow source. However, this flow source is the flow out of the first subsystem. So the flow out of here is a flow into here. We'll account for that in a moment. For now, we're just going to recognize that there is a flow source into the second subsystem. We're not going to identify what that flow is at the moment. There is also here another accumulator. That accumulator has capacitance C2. And the second subsystem, like the first, is exposed to atmosphere, which provides a back pressure. Now we're going to insert our one ports between the two pressures here and here we have a valve R1 and between here and there we have a valve R2. So we'll insert off of one junction between these two pressures and our element to represent the first valve and over here similarly off of one junction and our element to represent the second valve. Now, generally the flow sources are what's providing pressure or power to the system. So I'll assign my power directions in this manner. Now this is where we have to pay closer attention. Thinking about how this system physically works, Whatever flows out of the first valve is flowing into the second subsystem. So that flow is a flow associated with this one junction. The flow at this one junction is influencing the flow source into the second subsystem. There's information from this one junction needed to determine the flow at this second subsystem. Now, the second subsystem is decoupled from the first because the pressure here or here at the bottom of this tank has no does not influence the flow out of this valve it would if this spout were somehow submerged into that tank 
but it is not. So the way we're going to account for this is we're going to say the flow out of the first subsystem modulates the flow into the second subsystem. Notice that I've used a full arrowhead or a signal bond and not a power bond. The reason is there is no exchange of power between the first subsystem and the second subsystem. It's just the flow through this valve which influences the flow into the second subsystem. Now we have to simplify. If we recognize here that we have a zero junction with only two bonds and over here a zero junction with only two bonds, we can eliminate each of these zero junctions and the bonds immediately attached. If we do so, then we can further simplify by recognizing that this R element can be directly connected to the zero junction here. You might be tempted to do the same thing over here. However, notice that the signal bond comes off of the one junction. This one junction is common flow and the information available at the one junction is the flow through this valve. So we are not going to collapse this but we're going to leave it explicitly there even though there are only two power bonds. Because we need the flow through that valve, that information is what determines the flow into the second subsystem. Hence, when we simplify, we can eliminate all this and all this and collapse the R element to here. Our simplified bond graph will look like this. We'll have our first subsystem, which is made up of a flow source connected to a zero junction. Off that zero junction, we have our first accumulator. This will go to a one junction, which will leave, and our first valve. This one junction has information we use to modulate our second flow source going into our second subsystem where we have our second accumulator and our second valve directly attached. Looking at the resultant simplified bond graph, we have a flow source with common sharing a common pressure with the accumulator that goes to a valve we leave the one junction because we want the flow through the valve and the one junction will be our common flow junction the information provided there at that junction will be the flow through the valve that goes through a signal bond to our second flow source and our second subsystem where we have a flow source, accumulator, and a valve sharing a common pressure. And there's our finalized simplified bond graph. Again, this problem illustrates the differences between a power bond with a half arrow and a signal bond with the full arrow head. These two subsystems share one piece of information. That information goes only one way. The second subsystem does not influence the first subsystem. That's why they are connected through a signal bond and not a power bond.